Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's review the moment of inertia with objects that contain holes. Now, the hole, of course, the center of the hole must be centered about the point of rotation of the whole object, otherwise we can't use this, this technique. And there's one thing we need to really be careful of. When we talk about the mass, do we talk about the mass of the whole structure, or do we talk about the mass of just the structure minus the hole? And it turns out that sometimes they want the one answer, sometimes they want the other answer, or they show you the answer in the back of the book of a problem and you don't know which of the masses they're talking about, so we need to be very careful. We'll show you how to deal with that. So first let's use a rather simple example. Let's use a bar of length L that has total mass M. So M is the mass of the full bar as if there's nothing missing. The moment of inertia of that, of course, would be 1 twelfth ml squared. Now with this piece missing and replaced by a small little thin wire or maybe a thin rod where we can ignore the mass, notice that the piece that's missing is half of the total length. So the mass that's missing is half the total mass. So we can say that the mass of the remaining bar is half the mass of the total bar or the mass of the total bar is equal to twice the mass of the remaining bar. So think about it that way. So the total moment of inertia is going to be the moment of inertia of the total bar without the hole minus the moment of inertia of the hole. Now, the moment of inertia of the total bar is simply going to be 1 12th ml squared. Assuming again that m is the total mass of the bar and that's how we're going to start. So now we subtract from that the moment of inertia of the hole. Now notice it's also centered. The, the center mass of the hole is right at the, at the point of rotation. So it's 1 12th, the mass of the hole, now of course it's not there, holes don't have mass, but if it was there, how much would the mass be? Well, it would be half the mass of the total bar, and the length of the hole is half the length of the total bar. So it's 1 half the mass times the length squared. When we work that out, we end up with 1 12th ml squared minus 1 96th ml squared. Then, of course, if you put this in a common denominator, you get 8 over 96. 8 minus 1 is 7 over 96 ml squared, where m, the big M, is the mass of the whole bar. Now, if you want to know it in terms of the mass of the remaining bar, then we simply replace m by 2 times small m, and then we get the total moment of inertia is 7 48 the mass remaining times L squared. So that is how we make up the difference. How about a typical problem like a disc with a hole at its center. Notice that the radius of the hole is half the radius of the total disc. Big M again is the mask of the disc. M over 4 is the mask of the hole. If the radius is half the radius of the total disc, then of course since the areas are squared, radius squared, we end up with 1 quarter the total mass. M would then be the mass of the remaining disc. Now notice that the mass of the remaining disc will be three quarters the mass of the whole disc because one quarter is missing. Or if we equate the mass of the whole disc minus the mass of the whole or in relation to the mass of the remaining disc, M would then be four thirds the mass that's remaining. So we're going to work out the problem as if we have M being the whole mass of the disc. So that means that the moment of inertia of the disc is one half the mass of the disc times r squared minus the moment of inertia of the whole, which is one half the mass of the whole, which is one quarter the mass of the whole disc, times the radius of the whole squared. When we work that out, we get one half mr squared minus one thirty-second mr squared. Common denominator is 32, so we get 16 over 32 minus 1 over 32, or 15 over 32 mr squared, m again being the mass of the whole disc without the whole. If we then replace m by 4 thirds little m, then we get 5 eighths the mass of the remaining disc times r squared. So it really depends what the answer is that they want. Do they want it in terms of the mass without the hole, or do they want it in terms of the mass with the hole? And so again, you can see you can easily get one from the other, so you don't need to worry about it except understand what exactly, which mass they're referring to. And that is how it's done.